Now the story of a remarkable man who devoted himself to rescuing and healing some of the largest and fiercest creatures in the world. Kenyan Zahor Kashmiri simply couldn't bear to see animals suffer. His passion was to have fateful consequences. Kenya's spectacular national parks. Wild animals roam free, but there's trouble in paradise. Sometimes humans are the cause, and sometimes they come to the rescue. Tracking and capturing an injured wild animal like a black rhinoceros isn't easy. Once the tranquilizer dart has found its mark, the team has to be quick. The rhino won't stay under for long. Dr. Safor Kashmiri is the veterinarian in charge. After treating its wounds, the team tags the animal and blunts its horn as a safety precaution. The black rhino has been driven near to extinction by poaching. But this one will be saved. This was a bit of a fighter. But you expect anything with a black rhino, you expect everything, anything. This rhino is on his way to an animal sanctuary in Kenya. For Dr. Kashmiri, an instinctive connection with animals led to a lifetime passion for saving large and often dangerous wild creatures. I think it was his concern and his feelings for anything suffering. Arthur Din is Dr. Kashmiri's sister. He just couldn't bear that, you know, pain to anyone. Over the years, Dr. Kashmiri's renown spread throughout his native Kenya and beyond. He was nicknamed Zorro for his fearlessness and his ability to rescue large animals. He frequently worked for no fee. Basically, one of the main problems you see is that people trying to trap animals or trying to kill them for food. So a lot of times we come across animals which have either snares on them or spears or arrows. That is a man-made problem. Another animal, another high-risk situation. A baby elephant has been wounded in a snare, but the protective mother has to be anesthetized first. Dr. Zahor then darts the calf. The herd, now alarmed, swarms around the drugged elephants and threatens the team. A six-ton bull elephant tries to revive the calf and warns off the rescuers. But eventually, Dr. Zahor is able to approach and works to free wires around the baby elephant's leg. In time, mother and baby are reunited, and the prognosis looks good. Now, a new case. This time, an adult elephant needs running repairs. So what it looks like, it has a foot injury, uh, which has uh, developed into an abscess. With elephants, once they have injuries like that, if they pass you drain it, they heal very well, very quickly and very well. With elephants, it's very important, they must move. As soon as they cannot move, their digestive system gets finished, they don't eat enough, they don't get enough exercise, they go down. What do you think about it? As life conservation becomes more intense, there will be more and more need of such things because there will be ever-increasing human-wildlife conflict. The work that Kashmiri did with elephants was is really important in places like Kenya because elephants are really quite endangered there. Melanie Virtue works with the UN to help monitor and protect wild animals like elephants through the Convention on Migratory Species. In the last 12 months alone, she says, about a hundred elephants have been killed in Kenya, some because of drought, and some by poaching for ivory. 
elephants, especially when times are hard and when there is drought, they'll come into people's homesteads, they'll attack their vegetable gardens and their farms, and in the course of one night, an elephant can wipe out the entire crop that a family depends on for the next six months. And so this puts a real conflict uh, between humans and elephants. This is quite an interesting case of a very nice and big bull elephant, which uh, might have strayed into people's farms. And as a result, he was speared by a Maasai spear on the head. You can see the spear, it's at least gone eight inches into the head and then of course the elephant must have been trying to remove the spear and in the process he has bent the spear. Fortunately, in that part of the head is basically sinuses. So it is not causing damage to any vital organs, but of course it is causing a lot of irritation and stress to the animal and pain. And if it is not treated, it will get infected and you can get a very severe sinusitis. One of Dr. Kashmiri's best known and most remarkable rescues took place in the aftermath of the 2004 tsunami that devastated regions of the Indian Ocean. A young 600-pound hippopotamus, whose mother had been killed by the giant waves, was swept out to sea and stranded on a coral reef. You see, it's an unusual experience even for me uh, that we find a hippo, especially a very young one, out in the sea. Dr. Kashmiri helped transfer the nervous and exhausted hippo, now named Owen by his rescuers, to an animal sanctuary. As we let it go, he just walked away. I'm very glad that we didn't have to immobilize it or use tranquilizers on it. Of course, you know, it's uh, the only stress is because the new environment and it's been in a net for some time. But I think it should be no problem. In two or three days it will be settled in. Dr. Kashmiri was right. Owen did settle in. But then something extraordinary took place. Owen was put in a pen that happened to contain a cranky 130-year-old tortoise called Mazay. Maybe it was something about Mazay's rounded shape that reminded Owen of his lost mother. But rather quickly, the pair began to form an unlikely bond. Owen started imitating his new mother figure, observing what Mazé ate and following the tortoise's movements closely. It was the beginning of a beautiful friendship, which stretched into months and then years. The two became so close, it was hard to separate them, even when damage to Mazay's shell necessitated some running repairs. The reaction from Owen has been tremendous. He's very, very protective of uh, Mazay. It's quite a miracle, really. That's the only way you can explain it. Because if you try to connect them as species, uh, you cannot find a connection. And obviously, it's just pure, genuine love for each other. Eventually, Owen was moved to a separate pen with another hippo called Cleo, in the hope that they would mate. Sadly, that meant a parting of the ways with Mazay, who might have been hurt by two growing hippos unaware of their own strength. In September 2008, Dr. Kashmiri received a call for help from Ethiopia. The assignment was to lead to tragedy. Once more, the call was about elephants. The doctor's expertise was needed to attach a GPS positioning device to a particularly dangerous bull elephant, the one in this photo. It was Kashmiri's second visit to the herd. And he arrived so fast. His sister was later told what happened. Normally when these elephants revive, they are staggering, you know, with all that um, medicine they've had and everything, the tranquilizer. The veterinary doctor told me that he was completely alert the moment he was on his feet, the elephant, and he, he was aggressive, and he went straight for them. Dr. Kashmiri was killed by the elephant he was trying to save. 
I cannot thank my Allah for giving me the privilege to being of being a of being a sister to such a great human. Zorro, in the end, gave his life to stop the suffering of animals. His death was a profound shock for his fellow Kenyans and brought tributes from across Africa and from overseas. Not long before he died, he wrote that he thanked God for having more than his share of good life. You know, this is a unique experience for people who are not exposed to this kind of work. Okay. What I've learned, uh, I do it because I love the animals and I hope I can impart this knowledge to somebody else so they can learn from my experience and treat the animals in the same way.